okay uh good morning good afternoon and good evening uh depending on when you listen to this um voice presentation from okay my name is victor and i'm going to be your anchor for the cisco cyber ops training uh is a tier one SOC analyst training at the 28th model series and we've done up uh to 22 models okay so this is the 23rd model and the title is endpoint variability assessment now the goal is we've been able to identify and understand what our endpoints are and how we can provide security for all of those items don't forget we said your network is divided into endpoint intermediate and media so the question is that for all of the endpoints that we have how can we do variability assessment you need to explain the value of network and server profiling. Explain how CVVS or CVSS reports are used to describe security vulnerabilities. So, for each vulnerability you have, you have a score. So, I think roughly about 1 to 10. So, you want to quantify. You want to give a score to a particular vulnerability to see uh, what you should be paying attention to and what you can maintain and uh, what you you can put in reference for check for check up later they need to be able to explain how secure device management techniques are used to protect data and assets then of course information security management systems okay network and profiling servers network and device profiling provides statistical baseline information that can serve as a reference point for normal network and device performance. Now, you want to profile most of your uh, devices. So what are those elements? What are those items you should take note of? Session duration, total throughput or throughput. Now, when you say throughput, what are you talking about? how much what's the quantity of data uh, that is being churned at what's the size of uh information that we have over a particular period of time right uh we have definition for each of those items here session duration uh what's the average time between the establishment of a data flow and its termination to that throughput or throughput what is the average amount of data passing from a given source to give this of a given period of time? If I to give you a very simple example of what total throughput is going to be for a network server, it's going to be how much traffic are you uh, that is passing through you from between first day of January to the 30th or the 31st day of January. Right? uh if it's for something that transmits data so we see how many terabytes do we have transmitted per month then of course we have critical set address then we have typical traffic type so what are the kind of traffics that we have across within that particular server so you want to have most of these things documented listening port log the users on account service account software environment so once you have most of these baselines it's able to help you now start doing some vulnerability assessment the goal there is that if for instance you say okay we have traffic volume of um, 200 uh, gig on the average daily for a month so for a month we're not going to be saying 200 gig times 30 so we should have about 6 terabytes so what about if we have a spike right network behavior is described by the large amount of diverse data such as the features of packet flow features of packet themselves the telemetry for multiple servers big data analytics techniques can be used to analyze data and detect variation from the baseline so if we have a given base and I'll say we are experiencing such amount of traffic over time, what about when we have a dip or when we have a spike? So can we be able to draw inference from that anomaly, right? So what are kind of things that we need to do if we to, if we to conduct variability assessment? I've said it earlier on in the course that there are about three things. First thing you want to do is do some security audit. 
do some risk analysis. In trying to do that, what you want to do is conduct comprehensive analysis of the impact of attack on core company assets. So, first of all, you need to be able to do identify your assets. We've talked about that earlier on. Understand what you have on your network, what you have on your cloud, what you have on your web, what you have as per email, what you have website, what you have hardware, what tablets, what pieces, and the rest that you have. So once you understand that you cannot do some quantitative and qualitative risk assessment, then you're able to understand, okay, what impact is there going to be if we lose this, if we have this down for some time? Once you've done that, the next thing you want to do now is a vulnerability assessment. In vulnerability assessment, you typically check in all of your attack surfaces, all of the uh, points through which an attacker is going to get hold of your IT infrastructure. So there are several tools you can use to do that. Depending on whether you're scanning a network appliance, or whether you're scanning a web application, or whether you're scanning a mobile application, or whether you're scanning a cloud server. OpenVAS, Microsoft Baseline Analyzer, Nezos, Quals, Nmap, Bob Suite, um, Pest Studio, and so many others, depending on what you've identified here. Then, of course, you want to start doing some penetration testing. So, depending on what you've got to know and what your assets are, you want to now use hacking techniques to be able to test out this device and see if you're going to break through. So, if you break through, you document, and that now serves as a room for you to patch up. Common vulnerability scoring system. So, you have these vulnerabilities, and they normally have some kind of score, right? So, these scores will tell you. Um, when this vulnerability was discovered, uh, what um, are the indicators of compromise? It also gives you an idea about what you need to do to mitigate them. It will tell you their prevalence rate. From that, you're able to know what score from 1 to 10 you're able to give this particular vulnerability. So, CVSS provides standardized vulnerability scores. It provides an open uh, framework with metrics to all users. So, it will help you to prioritize your risk. So, for instance, if you have this having a 7 or an 8 or 9 or 10, it then means that you need to put a lot of effort to make sure that if you have such kind of vulnerability, you make sure you put a great amount of uh, strength great amount of uh, resources to be able to mitigate such kind of attack and of course some variabilities are just going to be informational right so they will just have informational kind of uh, okay please do this please do this uh, most things that other um, defense in depth approach would have taken care of okay metrics group so we have um, base metric group we have temporal metric group we have environmental metric groups so you have them very well spelled out uh temporary then of course you have environmental okay so this each of them being explained each of them being explained uh okay, this is what the process looks like for each of them Okay, see so what the uh, report uh, the score looks like. So any vulnerability that exceeds 3.1 should be addressed. So most of the things you have here, if you have none, that means that you typically don't have a vulnerability. If you have low, not most of most of the low vulnerabilities are going to be more informational things you should just take care of. They should just consider. Uh, patching up or whatever. But once you start having from medium up to critical you want to address them all right so you also have cve common vulnerabilities and exposures or common vulnerability exploits so it's just a database also for different uh, hardwares for different software open source software platforms it will list out vulnerabilities you have in them for instance even software development languages operating systems of hardware for instance cisco hardware's their operating system Netgear out um, um, operating system. Uh, which other device do we have? HP hardware, uh, Windows operating systems, softwares, 
languages for development something like php something like python for example php is in version 8 now so if you're running with um, php version 7 or version 5 some sites on um, some applications still run these versions so the question is that what are the common variabilities and exposures that we have for the particular platform you're running on or for instance uh, cms is content management systems like wordpress wordpress is used to build most a good number of websites so deep and of course wordpress is on version um, five yes five point something so if you're using four or you're using three what are the vulnerabilities or you're using joomla or you're using drupal or you're using magento these are open source web development softwares same thing with hardware devices same thing with routers and switches all of this is they have their point so one way to stay on top of your game is to gather enough threat intelligence as possible check up cv platforms then see how to patch up patch up patch up most of the vulnerabilities you have there for instance is the cisco the microsoft uh, um, based server or apache the linux based server depending on the version that you are running on you might be vulnerable so you want to learn from standard guidelines you want to learn from um, and threat intelligence uh, guidelines you also want to check out vulnerability exploits and exposure sites then you want to use those learnings and patch up or upgrade we will have to do jobs for clients that are using older versions of operating systems they are more susceptible to attacks because first thing a hacker is going to do is to do a vulnerability assessment of your device of your platform of your language of your whatever once he sees that version, the next thing he's going to be doing is going to say, let's say your version is 2.4 and there's even a 5.0 in the market. Of course, you, you're very well about three versions away. What he's going to do is going to put in that version of that particular applic application or that software or that hardware on Google and simply say hack blah, blah, blah or something, something 2.4 vulnerabilities. It's an open book. And of course, you have uh, documentation on how those vulnerabilities can be exploited. So this is another one, National Vulnerability Database. Uh, so risk management, device management, or software management, or application management, or platform management. Depending on what you have, you should make sure that you try as much as possible to see how to manage those risks. Like we said earlier on, there are some risks you just have to avoid. So stop performing the activity, even stop using that particular platform and use something else. Or stop using that, uh, that uh, framework and use something else. That way you avoid it. Or you reduce it. That means you patch, you implement security measures, you, in, you, you, you adhere to the zero trust principle. Then you also make sure that you have security in depth. But you're going to have something left. So, but whatever you have left is residual and uh, like we said there's no 100 percent secure system anywhere in the world then you have risk sharing share the risks here you can transfer the risks that's what it's called also so you can do insurance you can add source to another company in that particular activity then you also have risk retention i said the risks and its consequence especially when the profit accepting at ways the risks involved okay vulnerability management so you discover you prioritize and you assess report remediate verify so you first discover you get your baseline you prioritize after you've gotten the scores for each of them you assess then you report you remediate that you patch then you verify to make sure that most of those vulnerabilities you have identified have been gone okay tools and techniques for asset management uh, you have automated discovery and inventory of the actual state of the devices uh, you have to articulate articulation of the need, desired state for those devices using policies plans and procedures and organizations information security plan so here you want to make sure that your organization have an infosec plan an infosec document that involves security uh, plans for all of your different assets so you automate the inventory of the actual device network so a simple 
device like uh, nmap on your network can do this if it's on a web, web application a simple scan then of course you articulate uh, articulation of the desired state of those devices using policy plans and procedures so these three items is more offensive right right so let's say for instance if i consult for any organization or if i'm to implement any security program for any company one of the first thing i'm asking one of the quest quest questions i'm trying to acquire about is do you have an infosec policy so because no matter what you do in trying to provide security for your devices once you don't have an information security policy document everything falls flat so you need an infosec policy then comprises several other policies your playbooks your plans your procedures once you first draft that with management's approval then everything are built on top of that because that's what's going to tell you what you desire to have in an organization in terms of their security posture if you don't have that you're just going to do a brigade approach so with that you're going to identify uh identification of non-compliant authorized assets so you have authorized assets good but they're not complying with your standard with your plan with your policies remediation i repeat the process at regular or ongoing intervals so normally when you do vulnerability assessment um, it, it might follow up with the pension testing they, but you want to make sure that you do this from time to time so that you can maintain a very good security posture mobile device manager management so this is one way you have several softwares you mustn't be a cisco meraki system manager you have several software in the uh, in the market that can do device management for you uh a company that have several devices all you just need to do is have a software the ima number the uh ip address depending if it's going to be connecting via vpn or whichever means you just want to configure those devices on one platform so you can do updates from one point you can track gps just like the way you do for fleet management where you have several cars and you could know at what at what point they are at every point in time you could update uh, for instance for the mobile apps or other mobile phones you can update the operating systems you can you can do licensing for antivirus anti malware you could you could literally do see the state of each of those devices from one dashboard so that's what you call mobile device management and there are several tools out there in the market okay so you have configuration management uh then you have configuration tools so this is going to help you achieve most of those things enterprise patch management so this is for pcs right if you need to upgrade, upgrade the operating system of uh, the, each of those items you have on your network if you need to see the vulnerabilities in a particular system on your network all of that uh, is what you call enterprise management so this is one way you can do patch you can update everything from one point solar we have that feature and have that software and of course you have several others in the market space so it can be agent based it can be agentless scanning it can be passive network monitoring so solar wind is very robust they've been uh, they're like industry standards uh, you could check up their website and you see their different monitoring tools so information security management system so this is just like a framework so how do you do whatever you want to do right so a general model is that you plan you do you check you act right it's going to involve people process technology and of course culture environment environment matters a lot so this is iso 27001 um, for cyber security so you have um, for this standard you have plan you have do you check you have act so you could download this documentation and study up for NIST the framework is identify protect detect respond and recover so you have several frameworks uh, whichever they are using whether you're using ISO 27001 or using NIST or you're using SAMS SAMS even have theirs 
whichever that you're using you want to make sure that and it's not rocket science uh if you download the NIST cybersecurity framework i think in one of our programs either the digital forensic or the cybersecurity one of the cybersecurity models i share this framework for you or rather to you and i showed you is a, it's a, it's a very straightforward document that tells you what are the things you need to do to identify what are the things you need to do to protect what are the things you need to do to detect what are the things you need to do to respond what are the things you need to do to recover after this cyber ops course if you're taking our cyber breach um, training it then means that you are going to better understand this in detail because this is a tier, uh, tier one course uh, you, all you need to understand is that you have several frameworks for for managing security incidents so this is really what we call our incidents response plan right so we're going to do incident response plan then we'll review some playbooks playbooks are step-by-step -step actions that to be taken for any type of eventuality for instance if we have a manual attack what do we need to do if we have a virus attack what do we need to do if you have a distributed denial of service attack what do we need to do so but it starts from you planning then doing then checking then of course acting okay so that's all for the endpoint vulnerability assessment summary so please if you have any question make sure that you uh ask on the mentorship group and don't forget to log on to your cisco lms get through your material take the quiz within the cisco lms and get set for your exam thank you very much and see you in the next module